Hello everyone and welcome to Learning with Jelly. So today is day one of our 30 day sequel challenge. This challenge was requested by subscribers. So we are going to take 30 days to learn all about beginner to intermediate sequel fundamentals. So on day one, we're gonna talk about what is sequel and the differences between sequel versus no sequel. So the agenda, we are going to discuss more about the challenge at hand talk about sequel and no sequel, and then do a comparison and contrast between the two. And these concepts should set us up for future videos to come in the challenge. So the challenge and resources. So the goal here is to work for 30 days, preferably straight. I know consistency is hard. It's hard to be consistent with a diet, a workout routine, anything of that nature. But we want to try to be as consistent as possible to learn these beginner and intermediate SQL fundamentals in order for you to land an entry level role in data. So on the left, we have a QR code that will take you to a document that's going to list out the topics for the 30 days. I'm going to continuously update this document with more resources as well as video links. So it will be in the description below. Feel free to look at it on a daily basis. On the right hand side is going to be the Tech Data Careers for All Facebook group. This is going to have a chat where you can discuss the challenge with each other, find a virtual buddy to work on the challenge with, ask questions and give feedback. And this link will also be in the description below. So SQL is the universal language. And why do I like to call it the universal language? Well, we have some data on the left-hand side of our screen since we're all trying to land data roles. And Stack Overflow tells us that 47% of developers use SQL. But we're interested in data analytics or a data profession. So that second bullet point is even more astounding. 90% of job listings for data analysts include SQL. And this was a statistic from Birchworks. And last but not least, over 60% of all data roles on LinkedIn contain SQL in it. So SQL is throughout the entire tech world. So what exactly is SQL? So you may already know that SQL stands for structured query language. And the key word here is structured. So we're going to work with structured type data. And it is used to communicate with relational databases. And we're going to discuss exactly what a relational database is. And from and by using SQL, you're able to create re-transform and update data within these databases. So it's a very powerful query language. So relational database, you may be like, huh? What makes a relational database special or a relational database? And relational databases have tables and structure. So they are made up of these tables that are organized in rows and columns. And some of you, if you're familiar with data frames or a regular table that you import into a Google Doc, you have rows, you have columns. And each table has a primary key. What the primary key is, is a unique column or set of columns that uniquely identifies each row. So that could be a count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There would not be more than one row that has the index of nine. That could be a patient ID. There would not be more than one patient that has the same patient ID. That could be a product number. There wouldn't be more than one product that has the same product number. So the primary key is going to be a column or columns that uniquely identify each row. And you can see primary keys when you look inside of some schemas, some companies don't have it. Some may put a PK next to it, that means primary key. But let's zoom in real quick on this image. So we have a table called playlist and we have a table called playlist track. And so for playlist, the primary key is the playlist ID. That uniquely identifies every row in this table. And this playlist table has a relationship with the playlist track table. So you may can join on playlist ID. And we're gonna talk about joins later on in the challenge. 
And so what this is, is a relationship between all of the tables in this schema and how each table is connected. What columns are like alike in every table? We see a track ID in the tracks table. We also see a track ID in the invoice items table. We see an invoice ID in the invoices table. And we also see an invoice ID in the invoice items table. So it's like a puzzle. Which table can kind of fit with another table based off of joining it on a column. And so these tables have relationships, thus why it is called relational databases. So, but not all data is structured. Nowadays, we have videos, images, audio files, document files that won't necessarily be stored in a traditional column and row format. And so this is where the rise of NoSQL came about, where you're able to handle diverse types of data that exist in many formats. So I could have video that I want to store, audio that I want to store, transaction rows that I want to store, documents, images, and I can put it inside of a NoSQL database. And NoSQL stands for not only SQL. Okay, so not only SQL, it has other types of data, not just your structured rows and column. And NoSQL can handle large data a lot faster and it can scale out across multiple servers. So I can have the data exist in Ohio, in Florida, in Tibet if I wanted to. Okay. Now, some differences between the two, and I kind of like this image here where I have SQL versus NoSQL. SQL is more structured in this rows and column format, and you have a relationship between the tables. NoSQL, you don't really need a relationship. There doesn't need to be a relationship between one Airbnb property and another Airbnb property if we're storing it as documents. OK, and so here is a dynamic schema where you don't have to have relationships. This one is static. You have these fixed rows and columns. This is structured data. No SQL is unstructured. SQL data can handle a lot of complex transactions. No SQL can handle big data. Best for e-commerce. So SQL, anytime you need reliable data, such as financial data, healthcare data, e-commerce data for making purchases, you're probably going to be using more structured SQL data. Anytime when you need unstructured information, say for instance, you want to scrape down texts or tweets from Twitter or X now that it's called, you can store that in a NoSQL database. Say for instance, you want to store somebody's shopping habits from DoorDash or Instacart, you can store it in a NoSQL database. Say for instance, you want to store the relationships between social media, people on social media, Jelly knows Sally, Sally knows Joe, and then Joe knows Jelly. So if you want to store some type of network relationships, you can do it in NoSQL. If you want to store Airbnb listing documents, you can do it in NoSQL. And SQL, some of the common softwares or dialects is MySQL and Postgres. And for NoSQL, there's MongoDB and Cassandra, Neo4j, things of that nature. So this playlist will not go through NoSQL, but I just want you to be aware of it so you could do your own research, look up resources if you're really interested in NoSQL. And this is a nice um, visual too from Enjoy Algorithms about the differences. Once again, SQL databases have tables with relationships. In NoSQL, I can have just column data. I can have a graph. I can have key value pairs and I can store documents. So the actual schema between these two, schema aka structure is different. Okay, so let's look at what we're going to utilize. So we are going to utilize MySQL for this course, but there's tons of different SQL dialects, whether it's SQLite, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres SQL, all of them are SQL. It's just a different flavor of SQL. And what do I mean by flavor? 
All that I am saying is, say for instance, Postgres SQL, you can only use single quotes, but in SQL Lite, you can use double quotes or single quotes. That is a different flavor, but it's still doing the same thing. It's still going to help you filter if you use that in a where clause. So they're still going to have the same fundamental structure between the two, okay? But they are going to have these minor differences. And so this playlist is going to use MySQL um, because it's free to download, is utilized widely in the industry till this day, is user friendly. And I want to make a point that when you don't know something in SQL, it's all good to read the documentation. So I'm going to be referring to the documentation because you can have new tools come out where as long as you know how to read documentation, you can still keep up with those new tools. So this was the first lesson. I hope you have a brief overview about what SQL is, structured query language, and the main differences between SQL and NoSQL. In the next video for our second day, we're actually going to download the software and start practicing. So please like this video, comment, and subscribe. You also can feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. I also have a nice Etsy shop of fun data wear and apparel that I'm going to link below. And as always, you can do the buy me a coffee. Thank you so much. And I will see you for day two.